Oh, oh. There we are. You got catching him. this? Fish on him. little guy. We'll take it. Hey everybody, Joe Simons. Like Simon. Luke Simons right here. First little cold front. They got a little chill in there. Joe's yeah. actually wearing a jacket. Yeah, well, it was cold running out here. And we're still Ooh. doing a little top water. You can see we're yes. right here. Oh, oh, I just something hit mine. Oh, look at that. Can you guys hear it? Can you see that? Oh, they can. They oh, they're right here next stacked to the boat. over here. Look, it's, thing, it's falling all the way up. Oh, look. Oh. Oh. So we got our Moonwalker top waters on. Luke's got a little snook on. There's a bunch of snook I'm up gonna in here. I'm going to see if we can uh, double up without snagging my camera, man. There are definitely some fish over there. All right. Well, early morning top water action. Got to love Nothing like it. A lot of times, right after this cold front, even though we might be cold, the water temperature Ooh, yeah. hasn't changed that much, but it's enough to sometimes get them super fired up. Oh, I love early morning top water bite. Woo! Oh, look at that. Look at, can you see oh, this? There's a bunch on you. This might be reds there. <laughs> Could you see that? Look at that wake. There's a bunch of oh. <laughs> Man, they're Eat just it. stacked right in here. Eat it. Oh man. Yeah. Oh. yeah, so the goal here is to, like last time, to get an inshore slam, redfish, speckled trout snook. We got the snook right when we got out here. That's always good. Yeah, those those were behaving like redfish there. Yeah. And and how do you know why why do you say that? The redfish will wake. They're, they're not designed to they're not designed to hit top water. Those snook, you can hear that pop. They come up from underneath. They've got more of a pop. And uh, redfish have to their mouths are basically under their head, so they have to basically bulldog. You'll see it could be, it looks like a submarine coming up behind your lure. We see that submarine, that's usually gonna be redfish. There's nothing like it. We had that on that, what I guess, a few podcasts ago. Yeah. Man, that's so, so cool. All right, this is gonna be a. And one of the last podcasts we talked about trout. This is gonna be a catch right here. And just how they are just built for nailing these topwater plugs. I don't know if you can zoom in on Luke's uh, lure here, but he is going right into the to the feet. Come on, where this? Oh, there's one following. At some point, if we miss too many, we'll go to a paddle tail. Yeah, the bomber's been the ticket. Nice heavy lure. We're basically having to work our work into the wind, so we need something that'll that'll cast well. That's why these top waters are awesome. You can just launch them into the wind wherever you need to go. So we're here at the beginning of outgoing tide. Didn't necessarily pick that for any reason. It just happened to be when we could go fishing here this morning. It was super high. Yeah, the this is a really high tide. One of the highest I've ever seen it. Uh, but that's it, we're gonna keep it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, did you see that? I had actually oh. popped it and had my uh, hook caught on the, my leader. Feisty little snook. Dang. Yeah, so um, I've got 30 pound mono on just because I had it on for earlier. Luke, do you have 20 or 30? I do 30 for top water. Yeah. Just because there's a lot of big big fish around here, big snook in particular, that uh, they'll chew right through 20. They'll even go through 30 a lot. But um, you have a top water plug, you know, that lines on the surface. You're yep. not looking for, you're not in need of like a crazy invisible thing right this this fish are just keyed in on that top water bait on, on the surface and the line doesn't really matter nearly as much so right. might as well add a little extra power so the worst thing that happen is you know break off a, a big plug in a fish's mouth you never want that to happen especially don't want to lose a nice moonwalker you guys don't know about the moonwalker that is our custom top water lure and we sold I don't know, four, four thousand, I think it was, because we did we did a bogo for our incident members, uh, really just to get feedback. So you know, like anything, you kind of have to come up with a product and then get feedback, perfect it, get feedback, perfect it. And so we've gone through a couple rounds, and I believe we have a pretty amazing final version, single inline hooks, the beefiest, strongest hooks, probably yeah, known sure. to man. I've got the only prototype. This one's been through a lot. Missing eyeballs. You can see those uh, those hooks are, are legit. And uh, I've been using them a lot. I really haven't been taking care of them just to see how they handle. And uh, yeah, they're still in good shape. 
Lou are still winking at us as things been through a lot of abuse. <laughs> Caught a lot of fish. But it's, uh, <laughs> I've been very happy with it. All right, so where are these fish? Yeah, so we hope to and have now, the- now, uh, now after I say that, I throw it right into a tree. Oh, the, uh, man. I just wrecked that good spot. Oh boy. We hope to have a big batch coming in here before the end of the year. Everything's taking so long. I don't know if you guys saw that article we posted in the insider community about how many container ships are sitting off the coast of LA right now. So if you don't know, the it's container Joe, ships. Let me just go ahead and make a cast right there before I go up there and wreck it. Oh, and my get my lure back. There's a nice little Whoa. point right here. And oh, I almost we did almost, the same thing. We almost were both Ooh. in the tree. Oh, they're right there where they should have been. Yeah, that one deserved a strike. Oh, man. Let's see if I can get another one here. That's the bad thing about mangroves. They're awesome, they hold a lot of fish, but they are shockingly good at holding on to lures. Whoa! Almost got uh, that one. <laughs> You're playing with fire. Less than honey hole. Worst case, we're already going up there, right? Yeah. There, get one a little bit further up this time. It's tough when you're casting right into the wind to judge it sometimes. Oh, man. Oh, all right. So you're talking about the container ships? Yeah. Oh, come on, that's gotta get a strike. Yes, yeah, so these container ships, normally, you know, they sit at that port at LA, and so that's where most stuff comes over from China for obvious proximity reasons. And they might have one or two ships kind of holding out there in a holding pattern. Oh, this is gonna be right here. And now there's like 90. And obviously these ships have the ability to anchor in pretty deep water, but they've run out of shallow enough places for these massive ships to even anchor. So now a lot of them are just drifting out there, which is just absolutely nuts when you think about it. Um, and so it's just, it slows everything down. It's letting these things out there for many, 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 many days, even a week. I mean, it's, it's nuts. I just heard a fish hit way back up in there. Yeah, it's high tide. Sometimes gonna, you gotta pluck your lure out of trees. This is why we do these live shows, yeah, if you will. You Look know? at that, like all just the other fishing, in there. All the other fishing shows are taking three days to film a 30 minute segment. We take 30 minutes to film a 30 minute segment. They would never consider showing themselves getting lures out of trees. Really? <laughs> you know what happens. That happens to everybody. Yep. So we get, you guys get to see what really happens. All right, we're going to move fast. Good, the bad, the ugly. Let's see if we find some redfish. Yeah, that one area is holding much of a little small snook. I'm not seeing much over there. Ooh. So this is power fishing. Right now we are in the, the maximum strike time. Sun is almost coming up. Fish are starting to be able to see a little bit. Predators have a big advantage and uh, they're out there feeding. So now it's all about covering ground, moving fast. So we found that one little pocket of fish, just a bunch of small little snook. And one looked like a one little batch of reds. They weren't as aggressive as we, uh, we want, so we're gonna keep finding, we'll find some better fish. So mangroves, if you guys are, whoa. Ooh. You guys are listening, we're basically just fishing a mangrove line, the point it's where we had the, most of those little strikes. Always fish the point. I mean, it's basically a choke point right here. The water's coming out slowly but surely for the next hour-ish, two. It'll be pretty good. And our goal, obviously, is to catch an inshore slam before the sun really comes up. Ideally, before we have to put sunglasses on. It's always the go and even to find some redfish schools that's been really cool the last few times we've been out here in tampa we found some really nice redfish schools. yeah that's a good thing about fall is those redfish get schooled up and it's just a whole lot of fun and, be, and some pretty big redfish too yeah they're they're rarely small ones it's, they're usually going to be upper slot to over slots so the average size has been probably 27 28 inches 
There's mullet jumping. That's a good, it's a good sign. I'm going there in that little cove, see what happens. And then at some point, if we don't get enough bites. Oh, did you hear you? that? Was that on you? Yeah. That was a big fish. Dude, that was a nice fish. Oh, and I didn't freak Ooh. out. Oh, that's, that's a nice red. Yeah. Oh, eat it. Oh, I got one up here too. Oh, we hit it again. All right, so what I'm gonna do as a nice brother. Oh. <laughs> I was just about to say we- uh, Steal that fish. That was a really nice oh, red. Man. You see that waking? That, oh, that, yeah. that was a red fish. We might switch it up to. Yeah, that fish was pretty aggressive, but uh, a bomber would have, oh, if that was a bomber, gosh. that would have been a fish on. Because the, the better thing about the, the paddle tails is the Slam Shady Bomber. It's subsurface, the, the fish can eat it a lot easier. Um, just top water's more fun. That's what we should really, it's hard not to do top water. <laughs> oh really man, my heart's beating. Yeah, we would, we would have had more fish in the boat had we had the bomber. That was a nice fish. That was a big one came up two different times to... I had something messing with me out here too, so I think there's some fish up on the flat. Mine looked oh, like a jack there, there we are. That thing sucked it down. There we go, baby. There we go. That might be a redfish now there. Talking. See if we can get that um, red out of the way and then we just have to find a trout. <laughs> just don't tell me it's a jack. Oh no. <laughs> it could oh, be. Oh no. Uh, it's fighting like a jack. That happened to me here last time in the same area. Yeah, you have been the jack. I don't know though. Jack uh, King. Looks like a pretty I, big swirl. It looks. I thought I saw a little red tail there. Oh, oh, looks. Oh, come on, let's double up. Oh, oh my gosh, eat it. Oh, I just lost it. I just lost mine. You gotta be kidding me. Yours is off. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, redfish, redfish, there we are. That was awesome. I watched dude, him come up and eat it. that was sick. I'm pretty sure I had a redfish on, dude. Um, yeah, I think I, whoa, 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 whoa. That thing came up and slurped it down. That was incredible. Oh, that was awesome. Where's your line? I'm over here to the left okay. a little bit. Dude, that, that was, was awesome. I love this. Did you see that? Did you get that on camera, hopefully? Oh, man, that Ooh. was sick. That thing follow it up all the way to the boat. Yeah, that's that red, so uh, cool. Yeah, when you when you have those fish come up and miss it, right? It's gonna happen. Just keep doing your retrieve, right? It it uh, it attracted them in the first place. Because the two mistakes people do is they jerk it way out, yeah. which is not natural, or they let it completely stop, which is also I'll not natural. And I've done both. And I've learned the hard Ooh, way. That was killer. Yeah, that was Gotta awesome. love a topwater bite. I mean, this is this just gets so addicting. Let's see if we can get uh, this guy up. Let's see if we can double up since I we would have had two on. Can't believe I lost mine. I need to have your hook. So I have the old hooks on my moonwalker. Luke's going. Look, 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 look. Oh, that's a nice red too. Eat it. Slow down, slow down. Oh. <laughs> Oh, we almost doubled up on top water reds right there. Ah, check out this guy. All right, come on up here there, buddy. Is it a nice one? Yeah, it's solid upper slaughter. What a cool fish. Look how, look at the colors on this thing. That is just so awesome. See, let me get a quick little pick for you there, Lukey. Yeah, that was killer. So that redfish is, you know, its mouth is, is aimed downwards, so it has to come up on top and eat. Quick pick. Oh yeah, that's nice. It has to come up on top of each, so it, it basically submarines. Like you'll see that head come out of the water and uh, and just suck it down. It's just so cool. Get this guy off. There we are. Get him back. Oop. All right, so that was over killer. here, I just missed another one. So there's definitely a school of redfish down here, even though we don't see the school like you normally would. And what, this is a couple feet of water? Yeah, I wouldn't say there's a school. I mean, there's, there's well, singles. There's a school there before. Dude, um, this is like, like a private school, home school. <laughs> more, <laughs> more than three is maybe a school. Maybe they're homeschooled. Yeah, if, when you're in a school, you know oh. there's there's four redfish. Dude, that deserves a strike over there. Hugging the mangroves. Oh man, that oh. was killer. Yeah. Oh, uh, one's, one's on me. 
See that weak? Oh, look at that. Zoom in on it, Joel. I'm gonna slow him down, give him a little, oh, I just got a weed on it. Oh, the worst. <laughs> Some, oh, <laughs> sometimes I, that's a smaller one there. Sometimes I suck it down with the weed there, the weed just came off. Yeah, the cool thing about inlines is you get less weeds, but they're still gonna be, it'll still happen. Oh man. Oh, Whoa, there we Ooh. are. Good out. So we're just doing a little, oh, I just got a leaf. Oh, good yeah, day. A lot, of, a lot of floating leaves. Again, that's another time where, we, if we were trying to maximize our catches, we'd be throwing paddle tails right now. It's just so hard to get away from top water after you see some come up and strike. Yep, all right, let's see here. So we got a little point. So if you guys are watching, oh, what a cast. Let's see if we can get one out at that point. What a cast. Should be one right there. It's just so it's just so exciting watching the top art lure going around a point like that. Do you let it sit for a while normally when you cast, like after it hits? Um, and when it's when it's feeding time like this, I try to just go as fast as I can. Sometimes, like in the, if it's if the sun's starting to come up, I'll do that. But otherwise, I'm just burning as fast as I can. Not as fast as I can, but just going fast. Yeah. So I'm gonna go further over here. We'll, uh, usually the trout are up on the flats. Right now we wanna, our goal is to get a slam. And uh, we have this more of a flat up here where there's some shallow grass. I see a lot of small little bait fish. So we're gonna go, uh, if we do the mangrove, usually it's, it's redfish and snook along the mangroves. I'm going one more back over there. Trying see to get revenge. Get my redfish back on. Yeah, usually the mangroves is snook and reds and then the trout will be out in the open because they're just better designed for uh for hiding in grass they're like the perfect ambush feeder for that yeah there's all sorts of little small bait fish out here the sun coming up on the edge what a view what a view we've been trying to look for schools of mullet um you know we did that trout book review from Frank Sargent, and he said the same thing. Look for the schools of mullet. We had Tyler Capella on. Look for the schools of mullet. We had C. Richardson on. Look for the schools of mullet. We had Captain Peter Deeks on. You guys seeing a trend here? And a lot of new anglers sometimes like, well, how do I how do I find the mullet? Oh, dude, look at this. The uh, that hook. No wonder I lost it. <laughs> you straighten it out, dude. That's, that's an owner hook too. Yeah, that's an owner hook on that thing. No wonder. Jeez Louise, I got to replace that bad boy. You know what? I'm, this is my chance to go to the bomber and uh, start out fishing Luke. We got some Dr. Juice over here somewhere, Luke. I left my bottle. Oh, that's tough luck. Oh, really? That's gonna hurt your chances. Yeah, I've got it in my pocket. You got it in your pocket? Yeah, so I don't forget it, man. It'll end up like you. Oh, there it is. Put it on that platform for you. Yeah, so what we have here, if you can zoom in, there's all this little fry bait fish. You can see it looks like little see raindrops little on the surface. over here on the water? Looks like raindrops. That's all a little small bay, and that's what you want to find. It's you just want to find food. Obviously, you know, if Mola were here too, that'd be that'd be good. As I'm but uh, tips to maybe go slam shady 2.0 instead. Just the fact that there's a bunch of food around is all very promising. small little bait. So that just you know, that. it's just going to be an increased odds that there's going to be some predators here. Doctor Juice, Juice is loose. Slam shitty bama. Yeah, I don't know. I might go to 2.0 with all this little small bait around. What do you think, man? Oh, I got one following. Eat it. So now what a good brother would do is cast right behind that. Yeah, it was something small with the paddle tail. Man, this area looks so good. We got moving water. You got dimples all over the top, AKA bait. Oh man, it looks good. 
And I've got the Slim Shitty Bomber on an owner twist lock. One eighth ounce. Where a these pretty, uh, pretty reliable lure. Those of you wondering, hey, why do Salt Trunk guys keep talking about Slam Shady? Because uh, it continues to keep working. Pretty simple, really. I mean, it's funny how everyone on our team has caught more fish when they just become a specialist. Keeping it simple. Simplicity. Specialist. Justin loves that song. All right, sun's starting to crest up. So that's uh, the sign to hang up the top water. I'll keep going a little bit longer. Ooh, oh, that was me. Don't get too excited. So uh, what depth are we in right here? A little bit deeper? Uh, we're in about, it's probably two feet of water. And so we're at pretty much high tide. It's starting to move out. And in a couple hours when it does, then we would go back to that mouth where all that water's dumping. You do the same thing even in Jacksonville and St. Augustine and Savannah, Georgia. Hit those creek mouths and openings on the outgo and all that bait's getting pushed out. Yeah, the high tides like this, the fish will push up into the backwaters. Yep. And they'll come up to feed all the all the areas that they can't access at the lower tide. They'll shift up into, and uh, so that's where they are right now. And so they'll start. We're just working our way in, and they're going to start working their way out. And so the idea is just to intercept them, because there's a bunch of schools around. There's been a good amount of schools of redfish around this area, and right now they're we don't know exactly where they are, but they're somewhere up in here. And if we just keep moving at a pretty good pace like this. We're eventually gonna find them. Ooh, look at that cast, huh? That deserves a little snook right there. Or a big snook. I'll take a big snook. Right, I'm gonna do a couple more casts with this and I'm gonna switch to the bomber. Yeah, I might get a 2.0 if you put the bomber on. Kind of my confidence bait. But I have seen this bomber work really, really well here. And last few weeks, especially if fall fishing. If you guys don't have Slam Shitty Bomber, go to fishstrong.com right now and buy a couple packs. Man, when those big mullets start showing up, and this thing, you don't really have to do much. You yeah, just reel a, it in. Has a big old tail on there. It'll give a lot of good action. Go at that point over there. See if we can't get a yeah, snug. There should be some fish on this point. And then get some Dr. Juice, and put a little juices loose on there. Put a little bit on your leader line. That was another tip that, oh, there we go. Is that a trout? Oh man, it might be our trout. No, it's a uh, snook. It's a little hungry snook. <laughs> Four, 12, 14 inch snook on the five inch Slam Shady. Bama. Come here, little buddy. These snook are so much fun. It reminds me of bass fishing. They get so aggressive. That little guy. Let's inhale this <laughs> big old lure. <laughs> Pretty funny. All right, bud. Go back and grow up. So that's the bomber. Just got a little, see it's got this little insert here so the, the hook, I mean you can obviously you can dig it in if you want to, but this is it on that little twist lock hook, weighted, and it pretty much stays weedless with that. And when the fish bites down, it eats the whole thing like that and boo bam right. sham. If I don't get a cast, I'm going right under that point right there. If I don't get a strike right here, I'll be surprised. Oh, zoom in on that. Come on. That's, that is the high probability strike zone right there, right on the edge of a point. I can't Come believe on, there's not a snook patrol on that thing. All right, so that's my sign. When I go past a good spot like that without a strike, <laughs> that's my sign, so I'm going to the paddle tail. 
because I don't think uh, there had to been some sort of fish there. And so it just wasn't willing to come up and eat. So we'll now go down to them. Topwater fun is officially over. And uh, let's talk too. We met someone at the at the ramp, who's uh, I believe I believe a new insider member, right? Yeah, just signed up. Yep. And and like so many of us, uh, as new new anglers, because he was a, a newer angler, it's it's tough, right? I mean, it's intimidating. You know, you see an area like this on the map, or you see us fishing, and you're like, oh man, it, it looks so easy. And then you get out here, and it's like, whoa, it doesn't look like I thought it would. Or hey, the tide's a little bit different than the tide station said it would be, or, hey, this looks completely different than it does on a satellite map. And one of his biggest mistakes, at least from what we could tell in a short conversation, was switching up the lures too often. Now, we obviously just switched it up here, but that's going to be the only switch, the only two lures I have, essentially. And I believe Luke's the same way. I might have a 2.0, but what did you tell him? Basically, um, switch spots before he, you're going to keep switching lures. This is not like bass fishing where you got a pro up there with 12 different rods and 12 different lures. If you want to be consistent, become a specialist at one or two things in the very beginning. Yeah, and especially this season right now, the fish are a little bit scattered. Other than the redfish schools, right, they're, they're just kind of scattered around. Never know exactly where they're going to be. It's really about covering ground. It's so the thing just from chatting with them, um, just making sure that you're using, you know, light, light braid, right? It's a, yep, yeah, I got, I have 20 pound braid on my rigs. Oh, whoa, 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 that's uh, 20 pounds too much, right? If, if you're not, if you're struggling to catch, to get strikes, you're not getting action, use no more than 10 pound braid. Yep. I, I use, I'm for all my inshore fishing, it's always 10 pound. I rarely go to 20, the time I go to 20 is I'm dock fishing or fishing like a pass or an inlet. Cause up on the flats, we're up here in these shallows, the the biggest obstacle is getting your lure to the fish before they get spooked. This fish, they're smart fish. They're up in shallow water, and it's tough to get it's tough to get close to them. And if you limit your casting ability, you're just significantly limiting your results. And I did a casting contest on 10 pound braid versus 20 pound braid, and the 10 pound braid casted 20 percent further. And so I'd, I was doing the math on it. It was every 15 casts is an extra football field of distance that you're able to fish yeah it's crazy when you and there's about that yeah way. there's not much else you can do to to uh to guarantee you're going to catch more fish than than to just go and cast further uh, when you're fishing the flats and uh it just and, and it's even less um you know the fish have less chance of feeling it right if they're really spooky Whoa. oh boy oh man we're both getting in the trees gotta be aggressive baby all right so there's i just saw Nice and slow pop. These mangrove trees are so good. I saw some wakes here off this point. It was either a redfish school or a mullet, but either way, it's there a good go. sign. <laughs> but, you know, he said the same thing that we used to always oh, say. There we are. Oh, there we are. Nice fish there, dude. Yeah, I was right next to this mullet. Whoa, whoa. Ice or snuck. He oh. said the same thing that we did. Well, what if I catch a big one? I need to... Well, focus on catching something first. Yeah, and and right, get tied good knot, and um, and I mean I've caught multiple plus you know over forty inch snook, and uh, and big way over slot redfish with ten pound braid. They can absolutely handle it. Whoa, watch out for the troll motor there, buddy. Come on. This guy's fighting like he's a whole lot bigger. It's a nice fish, but he's fighting like he's a thirty incher. All right, let's get them. So if you guys are listening, that was nice snook caught right here on the mangrove point. Come on there, buddy. Well, here is some moving water. There we are. And I'm gonna go see if he's got any friends. Check out that fish. What a cool looking. Right now this water is a little tannic. You can see that snook has a nice little darker hint to him. Pretty cool lure right there in his mouth. Perfect hook set. Let him go. Oh. All right. Back off in action. Set, set it back up. Ready to rock to catch more. Leader check. Uh, one thing I'm doing too that I started doing, this is I, I picked this up from, from Peter Deeks, a live bait specialist. And I go, uh, yeah, I'd like to have uh, the shorter, I guess, uh, uh, so I have 10 pound braid and then I go to a 20 pound top leader and then I beef up this bottom section with 30. So you can see, I actually might retie that. You can see that snook chafe through that line a little bit. 
Uh, but this is 30 pound line. And so, cause Snook, they can feel lines extremely well. That black, that black line is, is how they feel. And uh, so, oh, Joe. And so in many cases, those fish can actually feel your line and it'll spook them. And so if they feel a 30, you know, 24 to 30 inch, something moving through the water, that's a bad thing. And so now they, they have a less ability to feel the 20 pound and then beef up this bottom section. And uh, so far it's been working good for artificials too. I'm gonna go ahead and retie this top section. Try to make sure Joe doesn't mess up the trolling motor. Mess it up. You're saving us from how close we are to the mangrove line. Have to go in there. I got a nasty little weed on here. All yep. right, so now we just gotta catch a trout. Sun is officially up. Still don't really need glasses on. Yeah, yeah so, but it's getting close. Yeah, instead of beefing up the line, it's just taking care of the line. So I would say use as light a line as possible, but take care of it. Right, so when you're using this light line up in the up in the shallows, look for nicks. If you get hung up in a tree or after you catch each fish, just feel the line and make sure there's no uh, no complications, because that's going to be how you lose your big fish. But if that line's good, I have all the faith in the world that if I hook a 42 inch snook today, that it'll be landed with this with this gear. Oh, real confident, are you? Well, huh? just testing all the knots. It's crazy that knot contest, uh, it was a 10 pound braid and I have a new record for the strength of a 10 pound braid to a, to a 30 pound leader, it was 26 pounds. That's a 10, a, a braid rated at 10 pounds. Ooh, almost got in this. What trees. line was it? That one was the, actually what I'm using right now, the uh, Daiwa J braid, eight grand. But I was blown away. 26 There's a pounds. Creek mouth there, or a little connector. Yeah, Power Pro. Is also, the other one was Power Pro. Oh, nice look cast. At that, cast. that deserves one right there. Let's see if there's any fish back there. Yeah, the other line I was using was uh, Power Pro. The Power Pro, just regular 10 pound Power Pro, and that one was breaking up to, I think it was 24 pounds. <clears throat> but that's more than enough line to catch some big fish. More than enough power to catch some big fish. All right, I'm going to my 2.0. Let you stick with your bama. So one thing also to be mindful of uh, when you're fishing early in the morning like this, when that sun is now starting to shine, is your shadows. So when you, when a shadow goes over the fish, they can see you. And if you look at those mangroves right there, you can see that's my head right there, barely creeping right over the surface. That means my shadow is going all the way to the trees. So basically what I know is that now I have to, as soon as that shadow goes over that spot, those fish are probably spooked. They now, they can literally see a, some big presence in the area, they get scared. So now I know I'm gonna have to keep all of my cast to the left of the shadow, ahead of the shadow. That's another mistake I think I'll see a lot of people make their cast behind the shadow and that's pretty much guaranteeing that you're not gonna catch much. It's the kind of stuff they don't teach you. Yeah, those fish are gonna be scared as, as can be. So we're in another little point right here. This is a very high probability spot. So I've turned the troll motor off. I'm drifting up to it. And this cast right here should come up with a fish. As long as I don't get in the trees. Oh, there we are. Nice. I was worried about getting hung up in that overhang. All right. So that's, Come these are silently. the, these are the spots where it's smart to slow down and take some time. Not everyone will have them, but just play the numbers game. Yeah, that whole shadow thing is um, probably hurt more people's chances than, than they know. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Ooh, man, I just had one falling. <laughs> and most was... of us just don't think about it. But look at that. I mean, yeah, so look how obvious it is here. So now <laughs> you see that and, and we're, we're still we're what, 18 feet away. Oh, probably more than that. 20, 21. <laughs> We were yeah, that's a big deal. We were talking about uh, Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, it's always got to be a little bit of entertainment on here, movie quotes. But Weird Al, what was your favorite? What was your favorite one, Joel? Gump. Gump, and then he had the Coolio one. That was great. But it started with uh, we had right when we got out before we had the mics on and stuff. We had a fish come on, and we're like, "Eat it, eat it, eat it." Dun dun dun. Remember that one? Classic. Eat it. Don't you make me repeat it. Or was it beat it? 
Was the original Michael that was, Jackson? Yeah, that was the original song. I don't even remember the original song anymore. I like Weird, Weird Al. He's so good. And he, the dude went to like MIT or something, didn't he? I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he went to MIT or Harvard. It was, it was apparently like a super bright dude. He said, hey, why be an engineer when I can just rewrite people's songs and make parodies? He did it, but probably the best Weird Al ever. And if you guys know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna give you a little hint. Spatula City, Spatula oh, yeah. City, Spatula City. Name the movie, Spatula City. Oh, what movie oh. was that? It's three letters. Yeah, it's you and Yep, oh, oh, he, yeah, Joel knows right. it, camera guy knows <laughs> that's it. Right. Weird Al. That's right, uh, classic. What a classic. Oh, uh, it did get bit. It was a. Uh, hey. Got puffered. Now, normally I, uh, you know, I'll fish it for a little bit. I don't really feel like fishing a little jerk shad right now, but of course I'll probably end up getting a strike. Yeah, with all this little small bait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with all those That's little. That's hilarious. Yeah, with all those little small bait, it's probably. Uh... That's hilarious. You know, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. You just gotta go with the flow. And that is, we had all that little fry bait out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should probably go back to that fry bait area and throw the nub around. Oh my gosh, that's way too funny. It's even a bigger snook than the one that hit the five incher. Uh, slightly. That's so funny. Well, that's why we do these lives. You can see how dumb we are and sometimes we just don't learn. I was about to like take the thing off. Like, I'll do one cast. <laughs> There you go, buddy. Yeah, we say listen to the fish, and that right there, there is, is listening to the fish. A little nub, a little snooky. <laughs> oh, it's way too funny. Way too funny. Now, now I guess I will keep this on, the nub. So this is why we call it the 2.0. It starts off as a paddle tail, clearly a puffer fish or something. You can see when a puffer usually gets it. See a little bite mark in there, and I'll just Pop it up a little bit so it's completely weedless. Still skipping underneath these mangrove trees. And now if we can just catch a trout, we can uh, call it a, even though none of the fish have been, well, I guess your redfish was really nice. And uh, still a successful day. I mean, we're gonna, we'll be back in the office before 9 a.m. Yes. That's, Successful day. Let's look up here at this point up ahead. See all that life on it. A lot of little small ripples. So yep. that's that's going to be a high probability spot. So I'm going to. If you guys are listening, definitely watch this because this is an area that you can kind of replicate all over the place. Oh, absolutely. There's not, I mean, we have same area like this and. Boquilla and Pine Island and... And there's millions around here. This yeah. is this nothing. Uh, it's really all about the type of spot versus the actual you spot. Back there, so. Although for our club members, and we do show our spots, but it's not it's not to say, hey, I like, go to the spot because that's not going to be the case, right? As the tide changes, as the sea seasons change, these spots will get good and bad. And, and so it's all about the type of spot. And it's just easiest to learn by seeing actual examples, which is why we show our... Just show the spots. And they're not secret, right? It's, Working great now, but it probably won't be. Oh, there's some guy coming behind us right now. In a couple hours, yeah, that guy's burning. Make sure to follow the rules on no wake oh, signs. Oh boy. <whistles> guy back oh, there oh, is oh, clearly oh, not. Oh. You see that? Uh, I wasn't watching, I was watching that. Oh, I got caught there. in the tree, flipped it over, and as soon as it hit the ground, fish came up and I'm so I'm, down. I'm buzzing a ride on that point. There's something right there in that little this pocket. should be a fish. Let's see if I can plane hard to get. Recreate it. Oh, there it is. It's right where it hit last time. I heard a really big fish hit back. Way back under those trees. Yeah, especially don't be burning through flats. Oh, come you on. See some with the camera. We were nice. We didn't put you on film, but I think Joel did. Oh, you did. Oh, okay, <laughs> Joel did. Never mind. So now everyone knows who you are. You jack wagon. Um, there's a reason. There's some rules. 
navigation rules. And also we all hate as anglers to see the prop scars. And this is a pretty shallow area. A lot of nice grass still. And a lot of times it's the experienced people, but you know, maybe they're not doing the damage themselves, but then somebody inexperienced right. will see that person going fast and, oh, I guess I can go fast too. Yeah. And now they're just wrecking the, wrecking the place. So it's best just for everybody to go with the law. That is right. Yeah, we'll there's some weird owl after you. Yeah, these fish are definitely up under these trees. I've been hearing some pops like way up under the bushes. All right, come on. It's one of the bad things about the high tides. Ooh, okay, so as soon as pushes just came out there, that might be a little school of reds. There's spooks that was a little bit off the trees. I'm gonna make a cast out there and the, there, go for it. Great wide open. See if anything be out there. Man, it is just flat calm out here today. Went further over that way. Sometimes that could be tough. Yeah, no wind, no clouds is is pleasant to be out, but it's very tough fishing wise. These fish have a big advantage. And so after this, once the uh, Tide goes down a little bit more, we'll start looking at those creek mouths, the entrances. Hopefully find one big school of reds and then call it a day. Cause they've been out here. This is the time to hunt for redfish in October. Ooh, yeah, there's some fish right there. Wait, what'd you see? I just saw some fish wake off there definitely keyed on something, some danger being in the area, but sometimes they'll still hit. Those did not want it. All right, I'm going down this mangrove line here. Try to catch one more fish and call it a session. Yeah, we need to find that trout. A lot of times, as soon as we take the camera off, we'll end up catching the final fish. It's yeah. happened. And in general, the safest bet for trout, like now that we need a trout, the safest bet is usually on the outside grass flats. We're way away from that, so we can't get out there before we have to shut this thing down, because we... Yeah, because our always... promise to you is to not hit stop on the play button. Yeah, so we'll... Uh, if we don't pick one off here... Oh, there we are. Ooh, let's see what we have. Oh, this feels more red fishy. We've got the hot hand today. Yeah, so just that was right on the middle. Yeah, it was. It was out in the middle. Dang, I'm gonna sit here trying to hit the main. Because we saw that, saw that little school of reds like 20 feet off the shore. So I was like, oh, might as well just cast around. I'm gonna go out there myself. See if kind of doing any... the the jack turn. Let's. Okay, now that's that's probably red. So you got any friends with them? Yeah, you can tell a jack because they'll just do a circle. They're 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 not uh. Not ambi turners, so they basically <laughs> just pick away and just keep going around the boat. I'm not an ambi turner. <laughs> it's okay, Derek. I'm sure there's a lot of people that can't turn left. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so as soon as as soon as the fish will make a run away, it's usually not going to be a jack. <laughs> Zoolander. What a what a great movie. What's interesting is with the tail off on this 2.0, I can cast it farther than I could the bomber. That thing is so yeah, aerodynamic. It's aerodynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Let me uh, let me get on the other side. Well, you got to get your good good light light inside. It's my huh? good side. All right. All right. Two redfish before uh, work starts. Yep. Let's see here, little fella. Not as big as the other one, but it's a healthy little fish. Good job, Lukey. So if you guys are listening, Luke's got a another redfish now. Joe, you can back up and get your shade out of the shadow out of the oh, way. There we are. Look at, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh boy. Whoa, sorry about that little fish. <laughs> well, you guys get to see it all here, even when Luke fumbles. Normally that's my job. There we are. That's that's better. Cool looking fish, this water's a little tannic. These redfish have really cool colors on them. Right, yeah, that's a beautiful fish. All right, well, I'm, I'm gonna try keep, it out. Uh, 
And he's off. Fishing myself. Line check. Perfecto. All right, well, uh, I say we call it. Might as well. Then uh, we'll go on the outside and maybe even do another whole other podcast. Because uh, once again, we don't want to be uh, shutting it down. That's our promise. Makes us unique. Like all these other fishing shows. Yeah, who needs three days to film a show when yeah. you got 20 minutes, right? Two producers. Or 30. Four cameramen. Hey, let's redo that shot one more time. Let's not. <laughs> Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm falling apart over here, everybody. Oh, that was awesome. Now we're real. Oh, this is just bad. Um, so rules I think we rules. will officially end it on that. Doggone. Now it's all caught around the, my rod tip. Ah, it's funny. Show must yeah. go on, though. Rules are rules. Can we even end it on that note? I don't know. That's a little bit embarrassing. Maybe, we, maybe we'll get a little longer, see if we can plug off another one. All right. Oh, look at that cast, y'all. Keeps going and going. I know we will end it here. Um, let us know what you guys want here for this this kind of fall and even getting into winter. Uh, Luke and I just recorded a, uh, a webinar. And you know, one of the things we talked about was a mistake that, that we did for, for, I mean, a decade. Would, we kind of just gave up in the winter. We thought, oh man, fish have locked jaw and they just don't eat. And now winter is honestly one of our favorite times. I mean, one, you don't have to be out here at 6 a.m. And two, once you find the fish, you find a lot of fish. And so let us know what you guys, like what are your challenges in the winter time? Um, you know, what, what specific, specific species, specific tactics, lures, types of areas uh, that you want us to focus on and, uh, and let us know in the, in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, if you haven't joined us at the Insider Club and want to see exactly where we're fishing every week, not just us, but our entire team of fishing coaches, definitely come join us in the club. It is the only fishing club that Guarantees you'll be catching more fish, finding yourself in the 90-10 zone, which is 90% of the feeding fish are in 10% of any area at any given time. And we help you save money on your tackle. Got a lot of really neat things happening on the tackle side. Um, it's going to be a big, big, big year for our members. And uh, that's our big goal is, you know, get great products that, that work really, really well and an amazing value. And uh, we got some really, really cool, cool stuff coming. Yeah, so. like, like right now, I'm testing out a new rod and reel that's going to be just for Insider members. I can't get you too close to it, so it's a little bit hidden. But so far, this is this has been by far my favorite overall combo yep. as far as just feel and comfort. Super lightweight, incredible feel, enough power to get the job done. I've been really happy with this. In any of our own stuff, you know, what we're, what our goal is, just so you guys know, is, you know, for, for all of our tackle, we pretty much have, you know, 20% off. Um, and our goal on our, our private label stuff, because we're cutting out all the middlemen, and there's a lot of middlemen in, in anything, not just fishing tackle, it's just, it's life. You have a lot of distribution. And uh, our goal is to start getting it at 30% off. Uh, so you'll start seeing some of that next year as, uh, as well on some of these things like rods. And, uh, and real, so really pumped, uh, pumped for that. So come join us if you haven't already, saltstrong.com, and uh, wish us luck on catching this trout, finishing off the, the day strong, with at least Luke catching a slam. I've I caught a couple little snugs. Join the insider club, don't join the club of people like that who are buzzing over manatee zones. I know Not that good. Wrong with people, second one. Yep. But as Luke said, a lot of times it's some of the guides this is also to you guys who, who you're not necessarily doing the, much of the destruction, but people copy you. They say, well, hey, I saw so-and-so do it, so I'm going to do it. And sometimes they go into the wrong tide, even some of the wrong areas, and that's just not good. That's super shallow up there. Yep. Uh, that's not good. Now, officially been reported. <laughs> so, guys, that's it. We appreciate you. We love you, and we'll see you on the next episode. I gotta put some sunglasses on here. Yeep. See ya.